What's going on people and welcome to the press conference reaction from Ralph Ranić today for tomorrow's game against Liverpool and also my starting 11 for tomorrow that I would go with. But let's get into the press conference first. Sorry, as first of all as well, that this is coming so late today after the press conference, which was at about, I think, half one, two o'clock. But I've been out and had to get back and eat and stuff. So that's why it's a bit later today. He was asked about fitness of player, recruitment, about Jurgen Klopp and, and past players he's had at other clubs. And so first off as well, um, Bruno Fernandes crashed his Porsche this morning um, on the way to training, but it's not serious. And apparently he trained after and... There's nothing like to worry about with that, but that was kind of trending this morning. As I said, trained after the accident, Ranić said he should be fine for tomorrow. So on the ran, they he was asked if he trained today and if he's going to be available, um, and he said that he trained with a rehab coach today on the pitch, but not with the squad. And it's the same situation for the other remaining injured players that he mentioned in the the Norwich press conference that have been out so far and will continue to be out for the remaining few next games. So that'd be your, your Fred McTominay, they're still out. Cavani, obviously. Varane, Luke Shaw, they're all still out. A big miss for tomorrow is going to be Varane. I, I think that we would struggle to get uh, anything from tomorrow anyway, but with Varane not in the team, it's even harder now. He was asked on Klopp with regards to his recruitment of players that he does, um, the likes of Canate, um and other players that he's got at a club like Mane. And, and he said that because some of the players that, that Klopp's got, Ranić's had at, at previous clubs like Schalke and his other clubs he's been at. So he said that it's not um, a coincidence that Klopp goes to a certain type of players. It'd be the same sort of players that Ranić would have gone for. And they said that him and Klopp are very similar in their philosophy and and their their style of play. So it's not a coincidence that the type of players Klopp is going for. But he said that obviously he's, he's uh, developed all these clubs Klopp's been at, even Dortmund. And he said even he's going back to his time at Mainz before he got to Dortmund of making the clubs he was at better and developing them and, and raising their levels. He said that the key is with that as well is that he's brought in the right players, Klopp, um, and he's got rid of the right players. And he's also built a squad and that's why they are where they are. And I think that was a little jab, a little bit of a message to the board as well from Ranić because he knows... He needs that at the club and then and Ten Hag will when he comes in. The, the the managers need the players they want to get brought in for transfers and we haven't seen it for a long time. The likes of Guardiola and Klopp, the players they want, they go out and get because the board allowed them to do that. And I think that that was a little jab from Ranić at the board um, saying like they brought in the right players and, he, and Klopp got rid of the right players and he was able to build a squad. Because it wasn't immediate success for Klopp when he took over at Liverpool. And he slowly built all these teams up from Mainz to Dortmund to Liverpool. So that's what he said on Klopp and the recruitment aspect of it and previous players that he's had at other clubs, Ranić, that Klopp now has. He wouldn't answer questions on the Ten Hag situation, really. Give the whole, we got to focus on the games and all that, which kind of expected. He said that we needed to be more compact in regards to the game tomorrow. More aggressive. Everyone behind the ball. And we need to be better when we've got the ball. Um, nothing that we we don't know already. He said that firstly we need to be very good defensively, but also a danger on the attack. So we know that it's going to be set up to counter attack tomorrow. We do that against everyone anyway, but Liverpool it'll be even more so tomorrow. That were the main points for um from the press conference today. Um, I did like what he said about the the Klopp stuff with the recruitment because I do think that that was a a message to the board from Ranić like indirectly saying that. That's what happens when your manager is allowed to bring in the players he goes after. Because that's not happening at United. It wasn't. Mourinho spoke this out clearly when he was here. And it's not been allowed to happen. So that does need to start happening. I don't think it will. But that's what... We can't make that next step and until... I mean, it's always going to be a problem with his owners in place. But if we at least had the, the freedom for the managers to let the players come in that they want to get, then that would help. But we can't even get to that point at the moment. So... But they were the main points from the press conference today. I wish he would answer questions on the Ten Hag situation, but I kind of get why he doesn't. But a big a big noticeable thing from that is that Varane is out tomorrow. Um, I spoke about this recently, that he's not... We signed him and he's obviously got injury issues. He's not got a good track record for injuries either. And he's hardly been available for, for a few like, weeks now. And it's just... Like he's not been great, but he's he's the best defender we've got when he is fit. So he is gonna be a miss. Going into my team for tomorrow, I've gone with David De Gea. 
I've gone with a back four, not five, because it's too defensive. And if you're going to play f five at the back, you kind of need to have wing backs, and we don't. Um, we don't have players that can do that role. Um, I've gone for Aaron Wambasaka over Delo. Now I do prefer Delo, but I would rest him up for the Arsenal game um, and have Aaron Wambasaka because I think on the defensive side, and not all the time, but I think overall, I think Aaron Wambasaka has the edge on the defensive side over Delo. But going forward, it's it's night and day with the the ability Delo has going forward to over Aaron Wambasaka. But we know we're going to be defending most of this game, if not all of it. So I would have Aaron Wabasaka there and rest up Delo for the Arsenal game. I'd have Bay and Phil Jones as the centre backs, but we know he'll pick Maguire, with, probably with Lindelof. But I would have Bay and Jones as my centre backs. Tellers at left back, and let's just—I know Phil Jones gets a lot of stick as well. But when he came in and played, I can't even remember who it was against now. But when he came in and played that one game, he had more enthusiasm than anyone that was on the pitch. He was man of the match. And then he gets dropped the next game for, I think, Maguire to come back in. This is part of the problem. And also with Lindelof, when that stuff happened with the burglary, he didn't play because he needed time. But then he couldn't get straight back into the team. But Maguire didn't get dropped at any point in time. It's it's horrible. And, and this is a part of the problem. But we know Maguire will start tomorrow. It's a joke. But I would go Bay, Jones, Tellez, Aaron Wabasaka. And in the midfield, I would put Lindelof in with Matic, because unless you're going to put Lingard there or Mata, I don't know who, who your other options are with Freddie McTominay out anyway. Donny van der Beek out on loan. So we, we really have no options unless you put one of the youth in there, which they don't want to do either. So I would put Lindelof with Matic and just change it and see what happens. I would go Sancho on the right, Mata at 10 for Bruno. I would drop Bruno because I think he's been shocking for a while now. And I don't like his sulking and bitching either. Um, so I'd put Sancho on the right, Mata at 10, Alanga on the left, and Ronaldo up top. Now, you could rest Ronaldo, and you could probably rest Sancho, but it depends who you're going to put in. You're going to put Rashford in for Ronaldo up top? He's not a number nine, unless you put a false nine, but then you've got to go with Sancho, Alanga, or Rashford again, and uh, none of them are strikers. Um, so... It's tough because we don't have anyone to... Because Cavani's out, obviously. He's the only like-for-like -like replacement in a number nine position for for Ronaldo. So I get it if they did rest Ronaldo, but I don't think that they will. Um, he's on form as well at the moment. But I would rather have him available and fit for Arsenal than the Liverpool game because I think we've got a chance in the Arsenal game more than the Liverpool game. So... But I have gone with Ronaldo because we haven't. I don't want to play Rashford up there because he's shit and he doesn't deserve to be playing anyway. But unless you bring a Hugo in or one of the youth players, like I don't know what you're gonna do. So again, not a lot of options. Um, but that would be my lineup that I would go with, and I still think that we'll get run over. And my prediction is four 0 tomorrow to Liverpool. I just don't feel good about it at all. Um, I think we'll be lucky to get a goal. If we do, I think it'll be Ronaldo. But. It's just I'm not looking forward to it tomorrow. I think they're going to embarrass us again. And I think we do have a chance in the Arsenal game, but not this one tomorrow against Liverpool. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the Ralph Ranić's quotes and, and thoughts in the press conference on what he said. Um, and let me know your thoughts on your how you think we'd do tomorrow. Yeah, just going forward. We've got Arsenal coming up as well. So big games. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't got a big mentality of, of players in that team that are good enough. So... I'm I'm worried about tomorrow and ultimately I think it's going to be 95% chance of a loss tomorrow. So I'll be back on uh, Wednesday with a post-match recap and player ratings. Until then, guys, let's hope that we can perform a miracle tomorrow and get something. But I really can't see it. Appreciate everyone supporting before I go. The target is 2,000 subscribers by the 1st of June. I can only do it with your support. So make sure you share the videos. Keep subscribing. Make sure the notifications are switched on. And I'll speak to you soon.